Hello, welcome. Thank you for being here. And thank you to KSB Wellness, Community Wellness, for having us. My name is Luke Herbert from the Pharmacy Department at KSB Hospital. And with me today is Gabe Billet, also from the Pharmacy Department at KSB Hospital. So today we're going to talk about antibiotics and the uh, resistance patterns that have occurred over years. Um, the bacteria have become resistant to antibiotics and how that can happen and what that can mean to us as a patients and clinicians. Um, so the development of resistance to antibiotics has been an increasing problem really over decades and even more so over recent years. And it's problematic for a few reasons. Um, the more we use a given antibiotic, the more likely we are to see resistance develop um, from bacteria that we're trying to treat against the antibiotic. Um, so what is resistance? Resistance is basically when a bacteria no longer responds to an antibiotic and so the antibiotic becomes uh, ineffective to that uh, given bacteria. Um, resistance, um, basically the germs are no longer killed by the, by the antibiotic. And, um, and so it's not our body becoming resistant, it's more a change in the bacteria. So in recent years, this has happened sometimes in just a few years and not so much um, over decades as it had in the past. Um, azithromycin may be a good example. You know, we still use azithromycin quite a bit. Um, when azithromycin was a new uh, antibiotic in a, an existing uh, class or family of antibiotics, and it, it was really convenient to give. It's just once a day for four or five days. Um, very low side effects, so as clinicians we like to use it a lot, um, but we saw resistance to common bacteria for common infections, upper, upper respiratory infections to azithromycin, and it kind of changed the effectiveness of that whole class of antibiotics to certain very common uh, bacteria. And so that's one example of, you know, resistance changing over time and changing how we treat, you know, infections. Um, so. Resistance can be in a problem within an, an individual. In other words, you may be exposed to certain antibiotics and have bacteria in your body become resistant to those antibiotics, and that can be a problem for you, again, down the line. But it can also be a problem on a community level. So Gabe, maybe can you can talk about resistance at a community level? Sure. Um, as Luke said, when um, a bacteria becomes resistant to an antibiotic, they are harder to treat, and they take that trait and they can pass it on to the other bacteria in our bodies on the individual level. But then what happens is, as we interact with people in our surrounding area, our families, our communities, our schools, our churches, um, those resistant bacteria can pass on those traits to those around us as well. Um, in fact, studies and research have shown that when we are able to reduce the amount of antibiotics prescribed in a given area, like our Sauk Valley area, that resistance to antibiotics actually dec decreases as well. Um, and we can reduce that incidence or chance of resistance by limiting how, how we prescribe and our patterns and um, our usage of antibiotics themselves. Uh, what are some of the problems that you've seen associated with antibiotic resistance in our area? So I think in general, the most common thing would just be treatment failure. You know, you come in for, you, you get a prescription for a pneumonia or a respiratory tract infection or a urinary tract infection and the antibiotic just doesn't work because resistance has developed to that antibiotic. On a community level, um, we, we start to sometimes run out of options. We have to change how we, what we prescribe based on resistance patterns. And so in particular, you know, in some patients that have a lot of allergies and then in combination with resistance patterns, we run out of options or our options are limited. And so in some cases, we may wind up using more expensive antibiotics. Um, we may wind up having to use antibiotics with more side effects. Or we may have to use antibiotics that have to be given by an infusion rather than just being able to take a prescription at home. Um, like Luke said, um, as more types of bacteria become resistant, um, we're having a harder time finding effective treatments for that. There's a growing list of infections such as pneumonia, tuberculosis, blood poisoning, uh, gonorrhea, food poisoning, um, these foodborne illnesses. They're becoming more difficult to treat harder and sometimes even impossible you know, to treat as these antibiotics become less effective. Um, as Luke mentioned also, this antibiotic resistance leads to higher medical costs, um, prolonged hospital stays, um, as well as increased mortality, you know, or death from these illnesses. Um, but how does resistance develop, would you say? 
you know, basically largely by chance. So bacteria and viruses um, can develop mutations kind of randomly, um, and, and they do that on a fairly regular basis. So if by chance one of those mutations makes a bacteria resistant to a certain antibiotic, um, and, you, and you're given that antibiotic, will kill off all the bacteria that's susceptible and leave behind the bacteria that are resistant. And those can survive in you for years, and they can also, you know, wind up being passed on in the community and shared. Mm -hmm. So what would you say we can do about antibiotic resistance? Um, you know, what are our options? So the main strategy is just to reserve antibiotic therapy for when it's truly needed. Um, and also we use uh, antibiotics for the most appropriate and shortest duration possible, just to reduce exposure. I always recommend to patients, especially, um, don't use any leftover antibiotics, um, which you actually shouldn't have any leftover. You should do that whole course of therapy. Um, but if you do have leftover antibiotics, don't use them um, when you start to feel sick. Um, definitely don't use a friend or a family member's you know, antibiotics. Um, try to keep it strictly to what your doctor has prescribed to you um, as Luke said, for that whole duration, you know, of therapy. So historically, um, we've tended to, you know, maybe in some cases overuse antibiotics a little bit, um, you know, just in case, more or less. You know, that you call in and you have a sore throat or a, or a exacerbation of bronchitis, and it was easy to just prescribe antibiotics, more or less, um, just in case um, they were required. Um, and, and that's resulted in some overuse. And it's also resulted in kind of an expectation that if I have a sore throat or have an earache or um, I, I feel like I have pneumonia that, I, that I'll get a prescription for antibiotics. And so that's kind of a challenge for our physicians to explain to patients that you know, it may not be in your best interest to prescribe antibiotics right away or in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. I think that when people go to the doctor's office, they feel like they're paying for an office visit. So I wanna get something out of that visit. Um, and so that has kind of driven that whole mindset too that I go to the doctor, I want an antibiotic, you know, for this illness. You know, whether, you know, it's appropriate or not, it's just kind of the mindset that I think that has developed over the years. And along with that, the guidelines that we use now and that our, our physicians use and that we use in the pharmacy kind of take antibiotic resistance and that risk into account. And so, um, for instance, your, your provider may tell you that we don't want to treat use an antibiotic for a sore throat unless we have a lab test that indicates that's necessary, or we don't want to use an antibiotic for a sinus infection unless um, it's gone on for a certain number of days, and then that would indicate that antibiotics may be necessary. One thing that I think is critical um, is for patients to, to try to understand that this is in their best interest um, and well-being. It's, it's important for you to get the right treatment for the right illness. And sometimes antibiotics um, are not, you know, the right course for that. Um, viral infections, antibiotics don't treat that viral infection itself. Um, now, what would you say in general um, about antibiotics? Would you consider them a safe therapy? Yeah, so all, all medications have risks and benefits, and antibiotics being no different. Um, certainly, in a lot of cases, antibiotics are life-saving therapy and, and, and safe lives. Um, so the, I guess the point is to just try to reserve antibiotics for when we truly need them. Um, antibiotics certainly come with other side effects and, and some level of risk. Um, a lot of antibiotics can cause allergic reaction, um, so we want to avoid that risk, you know, when we can. Um, that, that in some cases can be um, severe and life-threatening. Um, antibiotics can cause drug interactions, so for instance, a lot of blood thinners can be affected by antibiotic therapy and, and that can cause problems. Um, so in those cases, we wouldn't want to use them unless we needed to, or they were truly indicated. Um, and then C. difficile is a whole other um, kind of a side effect from antibiotics. And uh, Gabe, can you describe a little bit about oh, what sure. C. diff infection is? Well, developing diarrhea is fairly common while on an antibiotic or right after an antibiotic. Um, but in some cases, that diarrhea could be more severe sign of a bacterial illness called C. diff. Um, C. diff is a bacteria that is found in healthy individuals as well as ill individuals. Um, it's just part of the normal makeup you know, in the bowels um, for most people. Um, C. diff um, can start to become harmful when it's present in large numbers. When you take an antibiotic, that antibiotic can start to decrease not just the bad bacteria in our bodies, um, but also the good bacteria.
and in some cases where we decrease too much of the good and not enough of like say the C. diff that's present, that C. diff can then grow in larger numbers and can then present a problem. When C. diff hits a large number, it can start to secrete a toxin which can um, cause a lot of different side effects such as inflammation of the bowels, diarrhea, nausea, um, cramping, fever, um, pain. So, so one of the, the more serious complications, you know, of antibiotic therapy. The C. diff thing brings up kind of a whole other unintended consequence with antibiotic use. Um, you know, all humans have um, a lot of bacteria, normal flora, if you will, of bacteria on our skin and in our gut. And when, anytime we take antibiotics, they tend to disrupt that normal flora. They kill off some of the bacteria and leave other bacteria. And so they can disrupt and cause, disrupt your normal state and also cause a few unintended uh, side effects. Gabe, you want to go into a little bit oh, about sure. that? Oh, sure. Um, well, bacteria in our bowels, um, as well as, you know, in our genital tracts and things like that, are vital for our normal overall health. Um, these bacteria perform a variety of functions um, that are just critical, you know, to that health. Um, as we discussed, they help keep harmful bacteria in check, kind of balance things out. Um, but they do so much more. They'll help us break down nutrients in our diet to better absorb them. They will excrete vitamin K, which is important for our clotting factors. They will help us metabolize, you know, certain medications, certain hormones, so that, you know, we absorb them, you know, more effectively and so that they're a more effective medication. Um, so they even, in, you know, some cases, they're tying it to, they help our immune function and our immune systems. Um, in fact, imbalances are starting to be tied to things like diabetes, asthma, cancer, heart disease, um, even obesity. So that was a lot, uh, which we might have wanted, maybe wanted to know about antibiotics and maybe some things you didn't want to know about antibiotics. But Gabe, to kind of wrap it all up, I guess sum everything up, um, what, what is the answer to this question? I mean, is it to avoid antibiotics at all costs? Nope, not at all. It's basically work with your prescriber to evaluate those risks and those benefits. Um, understand and trust your provider. Um, if they don't recommend antibiotics at a given time, they probably have a very good reason for it. Um, and if you have questions, you know, communicate with your doctor, your prescriber, you know, in general. I guess for me, the take home message is ask questions so that you and your prescriber can work together to come up with the best plan possible. So thank you for watching our uh, presentation on antibiotics and antibiotic usage. Um, we'll follow up on any questions that you post after the presentation. Um, there will also be an ev evaluation posted in the comment section. Please let us know what you thought of the presentation and what future topics you would like to hear about. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you, Luke. We'll be having a monthly drawing for those who fill out the evaluation. Good night. All right. Thanks for having us. Uh,